So geology is like every other science. The only difference is that geology is mainly dealing with inverse problem. Let's see then what an inverse problem is and why geology is mainly dealing with it. I will address this concept with an example. In classical physics, we can define a case. In other words, we know exactly the initial conditions. In this example, we know which kind of cannon we have, how big it is, we know the dimension of the bullet, the power of the cannon, and the inclination of the bar. The second step is to assume a rule. In this case, the Newtonian's gravity law. Based on this assumption, we can deduct some logical conclusion, meaning we can predict, uh, starting from the well-defined defined initial condition, where the bullet will hit the ground. This is what we can call a forward model. The next step is to run an experiment and compare the result of such an experiment with our prediction. In the example, we will shoot the bullet and we will check where it will actually hit the ground. If the actual result confirms our prediction, then the rule is corroborated. On the other hand, if the result has, has not been correctly predicted, the rule is falsified. I know that seems a bit too simplistic and actually is too simplistic because things in the real world are much more complicated, but I think this is good enough to make my point, to explain the difference between a forward model and an inverse problem. An inverse problem starts instead with the result. In our example, we can imagine a researcher walking in the countryside and finding a hole in the ground created by a cannot bullet. The researcher will then assume a rule in the same way as before. The tricky part is that the researchers are as now to imagine a case which is a series of parameters that define the initial conditions. To stitch with the example, the researcher has to reconstruct the position of the cannon, the kind of cannon, the inclination of the barrel, and so on and so forth. So the researcher now is defining what we can call a model, that is the combination of the guest initial condition with the assumed rule. This is an important point I would like you to keep in mind. A model is a simplified representation of the reality and is a combination of rules or a set of rules and some initial conditions, the parameters. You can see immediately by yourself that an inverse problem is far more complicated than a forward model. In this case, we don't have any control on the initial conditions that can be only guessed and we don't know if the rule that we are assuming correctly is actually so. The uncertainties are huge. Moreover, even if we were sure the rule is correct, there will be still a fundamental point about inverse problem that makes them very peculiar. Let's come back to our example to explain this point. As you can see from this very simple animation, there are multiple solutions of the problem of the hole in the ground. In other words, different cannons in different positions can create that hole in the ground. Different combination of the parameters defining the initial condition can explain the result. We have different models that fit with the data. This is what the mathematicians call the non-uniqueness of the solution. So the scope of, the ge of a geologist is to uh, find remnants of the initial condition and new data in order to discriminate between the possible solution, even if sometimes it's not possible at all. To summarize, an inverse problem consists in using the results of a factual observation to infer the value of the parameters characterizing the system under investigation. In other words, we move from the data to the model parameters. The problem is that there is an avoidable limitation, I would say genetically related to this kind of problems, the non-uniqueness of the solution. So coming back to one of the main questions that started my quest a few years ago, I will try to explain what I think is actually unique about geology. In the past, many thinkers and 
philosophers have tried to define what is unique about geology. Some have focused on the interpretative character of earth science, as Frodeman did, while others, like Baker, for example, have tried to define an allegedly specific way of reasoning, reasoning of geology, referring to the important work of Pierce about abduction. However, the problem with all these definitions is that they focus on the crea creative part of the scientific activity. They are very important, of course, but only if we talk about how the new ideas are created. But actually, they don't say anything about method. Therefore, my answer to the question is that geology uses the same method as all the other sciences. In this respect, it's equal to all the other sciences. If there's anything peculiar about geology is that it mainly deals with inverse problem. That's because it is uh, an historical science.